For I, the Lord your God, hold your right hand. It is I who say to you, fear not, I am the one who helps you. Good morning and welcome to West Angeles Church, where we are excited about moving onward and upward together. We are here to encounter the divine, to seek a deeper connection, and to let the spirit of worship envelop us. Each Sunday is a new beginning, a chance to start anew and embrace the possibilities that lie ahead. Sunday is a reminder that life is beautiful and full of endless opportunities. My name is Trinity A. Page, and I am a proud member of West Angeles Church of God in Christ. Have you considered becoming a member? We love to have you join our family. Think about it. Pastor Charles and First Lady DeAndre Blake would love to connect with you, and the members of the West A family won't hesitate to embrace you and surround you with love. Consider the possibilities. Hey, we're still celebrating Women's History Month, and as promised, here's some interesting women's history facts. On March 24th, today's inspiring women are Matilda Jocelyn Gage. Matilda Jocelyn Gage, a suffragist and women's rights and Native American rights activist, was born today in 1826. She was a founding member of the National Woman Suffragist Association. Dorothy Heights. Dorothy Height served over 40 years as president of the National Council of Negro Women. She was born today in 1912. Halle Berry. In 2002, Halle Berry won an Academy Award for her performance in the movie Monsters Ball, making her the first black woman to win in the Best Actress category. There are more wonderful moments where women have made their value known in American history. Women have been positive change agents. Hey, Easter is coming. Mark your calendars and join us here at West Angeles on Easter Sunday morning. From the writer-director of the Emanuel Christmas Musical, West Angeles will be presenting Oh Mary, Don't You Weep, the Easter Musical. Be with us on Easter Sunday morning, March 31st at 10 a.m. Come celebrate our risen Savior at West Angeles Church. Oh Mary, Don't You Weep, the Easter Musical, a passion play told in a different way. You don't want to... And if you can sing...
We serve a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before you. Heaven and earth adore you. What a mighty God we serve. Father God, we come before you this morning in prayer. We've come to say thank you. Thank you for another day of life, health, and strength. Thank you because you woke us up this morning. Thank you for being in our right minds. Thank you that we walked in here with our own two feet. Thank you that you stayed the hand of death again and gave us another chance. We enter into your gates with thanksgiving, into your course with praise. We're thankful unto you and we bless your name for you are good and your mercy endures forever. 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 Have your way in this service. Touch our neighbor on our left and our right. We don't know what they're going through, but God, you know. We pray that you would have your way, God. Let healing, oh God, take place in the name of Jesus. Touch our pastor today, Pastor Charles Blake II. God, give him a word for this house. We pray that souls be saved. We pray that the body of Christ be ministered to in the name of Jesus. Look on our first lady, God. God bless her. Look on, oh God, presiding Bishop Emeritus, Bishop Charles Blake. Strengthen him, God, from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. Look on Lady May, oh God. We thank you for her, oh God. Surround her, oh God, with your protection and your angels. And we thank you for everyone in this service. We thank you that we will not leave the same way that we came in. We thank you for a breakthrough in Jesus' name. We thank you for lifting the heaviness. We thank you for lifting the tiredness. We thank you because you are our God and our shield you are the lifter up of our heads and so we open our mouths and give you praise we open our mouths and give you glory we open our mouths and give you worship we open our mouths and give you praise we've come for no other purpose than to give you glory we've come for no other purpose than to give you praise get the glory oh god get the honor oh god get the praise oh god we open our mouths and shout hallelujah Hallelujah to the King of Kings and to the Lord of Lords, the mighty God, the everlasting Father. In Jesus' name we pray. All the people of God say amen and amen. Amen, amen. It is time to read our sacred scripture. We'll be coming from Matthew, the 21st passage, this verses 6 through 11. Um, please refer to our... Um, Screens on your right and on your left. I'm sorry, I'm full this morning. <laughs> Let's read together. So the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. They brought the donkey and the colt, laid their clothes on them, and set him on them. And a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then the multitudes who went before them, before and those who followed cried out saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he had come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved saying, who is this? So the multitude says, this is Jesus the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. The, Lord, the word of the Lord is blessed. Amen. children are coming to minister to us today so let's give it up for them as they take their place all right yes but before they minister to us today I want to take a moment and acknowledge two special birthdays that we have in the house our pastor and our first lady pastor Charles and lady Deandra Yes. Pastor Charles celebrated a birthday on the 21st, and Lady Deandra's birthday is tomorrow on the 25th. Yay! <laughs> First of all,
First Lady and Pastor, we want you guys to know how much we love you and how much we appreciate all that you are doing for us here at West Angeles. All right, congregation, so join me as we sing happy birthday to our leaders. Let's go. Happy birthday. Kingdom Kids as they celebrate our Hosanna and how great our big God is. We serve a mighty big, big God. Amen? Amen. Big God.
Lord for them. We've come to celebrate Jesus on today. We came to celebrate the King on this morning. We came to lift up the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. He's worthy. He's faithful. He's God. We love to sing. We love to sing of all His goodness. We love to sing of all Your wonders. We love to sing the name of Jesus our God. It's worthy to be praised. We will. 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 We will
you, Jesus, our Savior. Hosanna! Hosanna! Our Savior, we give you glory. Thank you that you died on the cross for our sins, rose again from the dead, and by faith in you we are saved. Saved from our sin. Saved unto you. Saved into your kingdom. Saved into your eternity. We thank you, Jesus, our Savior. Hallelujah. Hosanna. Hallelujah. Our Savior, we bless you today. Thank you for this Palm Sunday, oh God. And we recognize what you did for us, Lord Jesus. As we anticipate your resurrection coming, God, we thank you, Lord, that you are Savior now and you are Savior in the future. We give you praise. Hallelujah. 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 Have your way with us today. We thank you for this time of worship. Save this world. Bring great deliverance. Use us in every church to preach your good news, Lord Jesus, so that many more may be saved, our Savior. Hosanna. Come on, tell the Lord, thank you. You may be seated. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Woo! Come on, let's give him praise. Praise the Lord for this wonderful praise team. Hallelujah! Woo! Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's time for us now to give the Lord praise and worship in our offering. Come on, let's give him praise. Hey! And as we give today, not only do we invest in this ministry of this earthly church, but we invest in the kingdom of God, the eternal kingdom, as we together seek to save the lost through giving them faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Hosanna means save. And so what we're doing today is recognizing Jesus as our Savior. So as we give, let's give today in faith, investing in this ministry and investing in the kingdom of God so that boys and girls, men and women everywhere may receive the salvation that is freely given to us in our Lord Jesus Christ if we will just put our faith in him. Amen. For by grace, we are saved by faith in him. Amen. Hallelujah. There are many of you who are committed to be tithers, to give 10% of your income to the Lord. I'm going to ask you to stand in a moment and then ask all of us to give an offering today. Give something to the Lord today through this church ministry. He sees us. He knows your needs. And he will provide. Can I hear somebody say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Tithers, would you stand? Father, we thank you for these who have committed to faithfully do as your word says. To give a tenth of our earnings back to you. We ask that you bless and multiply these gifts in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, everyone, would you stand? Everyone, 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 would you stand? Now, Lord, we give offerings today, financial offerings to this ministry. Bless it, multiply them, and multiply our impact in this community that many, 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 many people may be saved, may believe in you, Lord Jesus may grow in your grace and knowledge and give you glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, we ask you to bless all of these offerings. In Jesus' name, let everybody say amen. amen. There are multiple ways you can give. You can give physically through the envelope system. You may give through the directions on the screens electronically, but give us unto the Lord. Would you pass your gifts down this way, hallelujah, and watch your gift as it goes down, amen. And the person on the end, would you stand and hold the gifts as the deacons come by? 
Let's give God the praise. Let's say hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. Over 2,000 years ago, people in the streets took palm branches and they laid them before their king. What does the palm branch represent? Well, I'd like all of you to just look at your hand for a moment. Your hand represents a palm branch. And within the DNA of the palm tree is the ability to withstand a storm and bounce back. So God has given each and every one of us a reminder 
that no matter what storm we go through, we will look at our hands as a reminder and say, I will bounce back. And so with that in mind, let us lift up those palm branches to the Lord. And just begin to wave them. Hallelujah. And we sing Hosanna in the highest. May our King be lifted up. those palm branches.
Something special, supernatural about that name, Jesus. Something happens when I mention that name, Jesus. Oh, sing it with me.
praise the name of Jesus on this morning. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. One day every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Sickness is going to bow. War is going to bow. Hatred and inequality and oppression is going to bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Let all of us who already know just confess it right now. Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, let's just give him one more praise on today, beloved. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Something happens when I call you. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Lord God, we thank you for bringing us here this day. We thank you that you are still on the throne. That even though it may seem like the ground is shifting beneath our feet, and we are in the mi middle of the winds of change, that you are still on the throne. That it is you that commands the wind and the thunder and the rain. It is you that commands the storm. So, Father God, we thank you that even though someone here might be in the midst of a storm, that you are still God and that you are still on the throne. So, Father God, we come before you praising your name and giving you thanks on this morning. We pray that you would touch that hung down head. We pray that you would touch that troubled heart. But Father God, somebody here is thanking you for their blessings in their life, that you have been doing miraculous things, that you have been performing miracles in their life, Father God. So Father God, we praise you for those, with those that may be giving you thanks on this morning. And we give you praise for those who may be in pain on this morning, knowing that in you is the meeting of all of our needs. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord another praise on this morning. I want to welcome all of you to the house of the Lord on today. Let's praise the Lord for this most excellent music department and the praise team. And let's praise the Lord for the kingdom kids. Amen. Praise the Lord. And again, give yourselves a hand. You have made it to the house of the Lord. You have made it to the right place at the right time. And we praise God for you, each and every one of you. We want you to know that we have been thinking about you and praying for you all week long and we couldn't wait to be here with you amen has anyone told you yet how beautiful you are this week no one has anyone told you that they have been waiting to see you well we want you to know that here at west angeles we have been waiting to see you all week long we've been thinking about you we've missed you we've been praying for you give yourselves another hand Amen. It wouldn't be the same without you. And while you're up giving the Lord praise, let's praise the Lord for Bishop Charles E. Blake Sr. Let's praise the Lord for Lady May L. Blake. And praise the Lord for your first lady, Lady DeAndra Blake. Amen. <laughs> 
And again, give yourselves another hand. Amen. You all are the guests of honor on today. And you may be seated. Lady Deandra and I just wanted to thank you all so much for your birthday cards and your calls and the birthday texts and all of your birthday wishes. You all are making turning 40 so cool. Praise the Lord. I'm a little older than that. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> but we also want to praise the Lord that Deacon Loyal Ellison is celebrating a birthday. Amen. Let's praise the Lord for him. Deacon Ellison, or he's probably in the back right now on assignment. No, where is he? Amen. Deacon Ellison. Amen. Praise the Lord. People are telling me to yell out your age because they can't. Believe it. I mean, do I have permission? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. All right, amen. Deacon Ellison is turning 92 years old today. Hey! I did say 92, right? Everybody stick your hand out at Deacon Ellison and say, Lord, give me some of that. Hey, hey amen. <laughs> yeah. Y'all wish 92 could look that good. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I am praising the Lord that he blessed me like that. Hallelujah. Everybody just do like that. It's hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Well, happy birthday to you, sir. Thank you so much. And Deacon Ellison is still serving as an active deacon. Amen. He's just not on duty today. Praise the Lord. Never let the devil make you think that there is not a place for you to serve here at West Angeles. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, beloved, we also have some very special guests visiting us here today from King's Academy in Sunnyvale, California. Let all of my King's Academy brothers and sisters stand up on today. Let's praise the Lord for them. Amen. Thank you all so much for worshiping with us on today and making our worship so rich. It would not be the same without you. Thank you so much for being a part of our worship. Let's give the Lord another praise for them on today. Amen. And you may be seated. Amen. I know if I didn't say anything, they'd probably be standing up until benediction. <laughs> That's called respect for the house. See, y'all, amen. Let's praise the Lord for them again. Thank you. But again, you all see behind me this most wonderful Palm Sunday white curtain, amen, praise the Lord. And that is just in prep, that's not here for Palm Sunday, amen. That is just in preparation for this most excellent Easter presentation and Easter service that will be coming up just this week, amen. So, I mean, just on next Sunday, amen. So, tell everybody that's coming out. I know y'all want to look behind the curtain and see what's going on back there, but I promise you, if you come next week, for our Easter experience, you will be completely blown away. Tell everybody, tell your mama, your cousins, your aunties, your neighbors, your co-workers, your haters, amen, even tell them to come on out and they can get saved, amen, next week. Praise the Lord. The Bible says pray for your enemies, amen. Amen. So, you know, in the middle of, you know, y'all battling it out, just invite them to church, amen, and let the Lord do something good in their life, but just come on out. Service will be starting promptly at 10 o'clock, but we suggest you get here a little bit early. And we do praise the Lord for each and every one of you. Well, beloved, oh, you know what? I'm reminded that the Lord just gave a stupendous blessing and miracle to our West Angeles Community Development Corporation. Let's praise the Lord for them. <laughs> they were able to get a grant numbering a very nice and beautiful amount but I kind of hesitated to say because some folks think that when the Lord is blessing this part of the ministry that they don't have to give in this part of the ministry. 
And even though the Lord has been doing an excellent work, God is still calling on us to do and to continue to do a great work and support the work of the Lord regarding here on this side of the ministry as well. So we praise the Lord for what he's doing in the life of our CDC. Amen. But we also want to refine and intensify the work that God is doing here. So we are still being called upon to give. And we thank you so much for the support and your generosity in all parts of the life of the church. Well, beloved, turn with me to Matthew chapter 21, verse 6. And in the spirit of Palm Sunday. So the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. They brought the donkey and the colt, laid their clothes on them, and set him on them. And a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then the multitudes who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he had come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, who is this? So the multitudes said, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth. Of Galilee. Now, my brothers and sisters, turn to Mark 15, verse 11, where it reads, But the chief priest stirred up the crowd so that he should rather release Barabbas to them. Pilate answered and said to them again, what then do you want me to do with him whom you call the king of the Jews? So they cried out again, crucify him. Then Pilate said to them, why? What evil has he done? But they cried out all the more, crucify him. So Pilate wanting to gratify the crowd, released Barabbas to them. And he delivered Jesus after he had scourged him to be crucified. Our title for this time on this Palm Sunday is Loved Today But Hated Tomorrow. technical difficulty right here. Can y'all hear me? Y'all couldn't hear me before? Do I need to read everything again? We can. Real? I'm just checking. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because I'll read it again. You know, we can. Okay, good. With thumbs up. All right, beautiful. But our title on this time today for Palm Sunday is Loved Today But Hated Tomorrow. Look at your neighbor and say, loved today, today. but hate it tomorrow. tomorrow. Now, for many years as I grew up in the church and heard this story in the life of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ at this time, I used to wonder why Jesus, our Savior, got one reception when he rode into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday and got another far different response just five days later, not even a week later, on Good Friday. I used to ask myself, where were all of those people that were screaming, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, when the crowd was screaming, crucify him? Why didn't the people who were waving palm branches and laying down their clothes in the road speak up and defend Jesus when a 
hostile crowd was screaming, crucify him. No one's ever wondered that? Just later that week on a Friday. Now, since we today know who Jesus was and is, the lamb that was slain, the lion of Judah, in whom rest all power in heaven and in earth, who is the word and was with God and is God, whose name is above every name. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Since we today already know who Jesus is, it isn't difficult to understand to us why the storm and the wind and the waves obeyed him. It isn't difficult for us today to understand why sickness and paralysis and demons and disease left those who he touched. Why the dead would rise when he would pray for and command them to rise. Since we today know who he really was, it isn't difficult for us to understand ultimately why the crowd laid their clothes and palm branches on the road so he could ride a donkey on them, why the rocks and the stones would cry out if the crowd was quiet. Because we today already know who Jesus was. What baffled me was the fact that the people of Jerusalem at this time did all of that not knowing who Jesus really was. So what were they thinking? Today we call him Lord because we know him as the Son of God, the risen Savior. But why did everyone there that day cry out, Hosanna to the Son of David? Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna, in the highest. Now at this time, beloved, the, the children of Israel had been under the brutal, oppressive rule of the Romans for about 60 years. Through force of arms, the Romans have turned the children of Israel into subjects of the Roman Empire. It is no secret that the Hebrew people hated the Romans with a very special passion and viewed them as pagan, heathen, foreign invaders. Now, throughout the history of Israel, most of the time when the children of Israel were being oppressed by a foreign people, God would raise up a, a deliverer, a Messiah, to save them from their oppressors. There was Moses who led them out of the land of Egypt 1,300 years earlier. There was Joshua who led them into the, the land of Canaan, the promised land. There was Othniel who defeated Cushan Richethane. And then there was Ehud that defeated Eglon, the king of Moab. Then there was Shamgar that defeated the Philistines the first time. And then Deborah and Barak defeated Jab Jabin, the king of the Canaanites. And then there was Gideon who was risen up and who defeated the Midianites and the Amalekites. And then there was Jephthah who defeated the Ammonites. And then Samson came and he defeated the Philistines a second time. And then King David finally defeated the Philistines once and for all. But the history of Israel was full of men that rose up to defeat Israel's enemies. There was no reason to believe that there was not going to be another deliverer that would rise up and defeat this latest group of heathens, the Romans. Is what had happened before. Is what the children of Israel were used to. 
It was what God had done in the past, and it was what the children of Israel wanted and had been praying for and were expecting any day now the Messiah is going to come and get rid of these guys who have their boot on our back. In fact, there are more than 50 prophecies in the Old Testament that speak to the coming of the Messiah and Jesus matched the description exactly. Isaiah 35 and 5 reads, Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the dumb sing. This is in Isaiah. All we have to do is look at the miracles that Jesus performed and we'll see that this was true. Wherever Jesus went, the eyes of the blind were opened. Wherever Jesus went, the lame leaped like a deer. Wherever Jesus went, the ears of the deaf were unstopped and the tongues of the dumb were made to sing. On two separate occasions, thousands, thousands were fed for him from him, breaking up just a little bit of food and multiplying it until everybody who was there was fed. And then there was food left over. Forces of nature obeyed his commands. The dead were raised when he prayed for them. Even his cousin, John the Baptist, from prison sent people to ask Jesus, are you the one? Then Jesus answered in Matthew 11 and 5, the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear, the dead are raised up and the poor have the gospel preached to them. Amen. Almost everybody, everybody in the nation had heard and memorized the prophecy in Isaiah 9 and 6 that said, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor. Mighty God, everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. The most clear prophecy spoke directly to our text. 500 years before the day that Jesus rode that donkey into Jerusalem, Zechariah 9 and 9 reads, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding on a donkey, a coat, a foal of a donkey. It goes on to say, I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The battle bow shall be cut off. He shall speak peace to the nation. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. Every Jewish male, every Jewish child that sat in synagogue, it was their obligation to memorize and meditate on all of these prophecies. There's almost no way that you could have been a person in Judea alive during these times that had heard these passages and not wonder if Jesus was who the scriptures were referring to. 
especially given the fact that he came riding into Jerusalem on that day on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey, just like it said in the prophecy. Every Hebrew had been raised memorizing and meditating on these scriptures. All of the indicators were there that he was going to set everything right in their world. Right after the triumphal entry, right after all of the hosanna to the highest and the laying down of the palm leaves and the laying down of the clothes, in Matthew 21 and 12, it says, and Jesus enters the temple and drove out all who sold and bought in the temple. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold pigeons. He said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you make it a den of robbers. At that time, Jesus broke up one of the main hustles that the Sadducees and Pharisees had going on in the temple. Real quick, they would charge you an exchange rate. The money of the Roman Empire was the denarii. But the money of the Jewish culture and the Judea was the shekel. So they would make you go in there, and the only way that you could give sacrifices was through shekels. So you would have to bring denarii, and then the Pharisees would charge you a ridiculously high extortion rate to exchange the money, and then they would keep all of the money. And they kept the money of the money changers in a box under the table. So when Jesus turned over their table, he was turning over their money. And people don't get mad until you start messing with they. Okay, that's just a little game for you right there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but Jesus was asserting that this was the house of God, his own house, if you will. And the things that went on in that place would be done to please God and God alone. Some would say that he was cleaning house. Right after that, he even went and healed the sick and the lame that were around the temple. Excitement around him began to build higher and higher and higher. Then upon leaving Jerusalem, he saw a fig tree and he cursed it. Matthew 21 and 19 says, And seeing a fig tree by the wayside, he went to it and found nothing on it but only leaves. And he said to it, May no fruit ever come from you again. And the fig tree withered at once. You see, the fig tree represented Israel and was barren. And the king was not happy with the fruit his kingdom was producing. He is then challenged by the Pharisees and Sadducees and the scribes in a number of ways, and he completely shuts them down. He embarrasses them, calls them out, and shows them for what they truly are. He calls them blind. He calls them fools and hypocrites. He says to them in Matthew 23 and 25, woe to you, scribes and Sadducees, hypocrites, for you cleanse the outside of the cup and the dish, but on the inside they are full of extortion and self-indulgence. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like whitewashed tombs that appear beautiful outwardly but on the inside are full of dead men's bones and uncleanliness. I mean, Jesus blew them up. He said in front of all of their people that they may look good on the outside, but on the inside they were ugly. They were filthy. Then he spoke to them about the signs of the times and the destruction of the temple. He spoke about the tribulation and the coming of the Son of Man, about the fig tree, the wedding feast, and the ten virgins. 
all parables that let the children of Israel know that the time of the Lord was at hand and they couldn't wait for it to happen. How many of us are waiting for God to pay back all of those that have done us wrong? You can be honest. Go on and raise your hand. Amen. Oh, y'all ain't going to raise your hand. I'm going to raise my hand. There's some folks that I've been that dummy. I've been waiting. Get them. <laughs> been waiting for God to do something about those that have done us wrong and held us down. The word says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. And we are just waiting with bated breath for God to take vengeance. And we hope we're there to see God get them. Go on and tell the truth and shame the devil. Amen. But they were waiting for God to do something spectacular and to make everything right in their world. It was the main reason that the people of Israel gave Jesus such a triumphal entry into the city of Jerusalem. It was why they pulled off their coats and cut down palm branches and laid them in the road so Jesus could walk on them. It's because they thought that he was going to come like David and conquer their enemies, the Romans, and be their earthly king. But God had a different plan in mind entirely. In my mind's eye, I can see it. Jesus tells them that they are first to love their neighbors as they love themselves. They're like, okay, all right, that's cool. And then he tells them who their neighbors are. And then they're like, oh, okay, all right, Samaritans, all right, cool, all right. And then he went as far as to tell them to render under Caesar what is Caesar's. And they're like, well, wait a minute now. I don't quite like them dudes, but, you know, let's, let's keep it going. Let's see what he says. Then he tells them to love their enemies. Even the Romans, somebody in the crowd asked, especially the Romans. Pray for those who persecute you, even. I bet you could have heard a rat licking cotton that day. I bet you could have heard that cotton ball hit the floor. Somebody was like, oh, he tripping. Pray for the, oh, no. The Pharisees and the Sadducees in their jealousy, always in the crowd, were spreading lies about Jesus. And slowly, public opinion towards our Savior changed. They were already looking for a way to get rid of Jesus because he was threatening the status quo. He was threatening the natural order of things. But because he had the support and the love of the people, because he was spreading love and healing so many people, they could not attack him openly because they were afraid of revolt. But now they saw their chance. So by the time that we get to Matthew 27 and 20, public opinion in Jerusalem had turned on Jesus. In their eyes, he was no longer the promised one, but just another charlatan come to deceive. He was not the Messiah and the physical ruler that they thought he was going to be. By the time we reach the second part of our text in Mark 15 and 11, when offered Barabbas, who was a known criminal, a known revolutionary and hater of the Romans, when they were offered Barabbas or Jesus, they chose Barabbas and called for Jesus' blood. Why? Because they thought that Barabbas was the one who was going to give them what they wanted instead. Now it begins to make sense that the same crowd, I was wondering, where are these guys? The same crowd that sang, Hosanna, 
Hosanna to Jesus as he rode in on the cart that sang, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. The same crowd that was laying down palm branches so that Jesus did not touch the, touch the ground is the same crowd, the same crowd that screamed, crucify him. Crucify him. They were so caught up in their own desires. They were so caught up in what they wanted that when they found out that Jesus was not who they thought he was, not their physical liberator and their earthly king, that they screamed for his crucifixion. They wanted someone that would free them from the Romans, but he came to free them from themselves. He came so that they and us could have life and life everlasting. Somebody give the Lord praise on today. (laughs) Even the disciples who loved Jesus, even his brothers, his crew who loved him, did not know exactly who he was. Many times the scriptures show them arguing amongst themselves as to who would be the greatest in the kingdom. Even the mother of James and John lobbied for Jesus to let her sons sit on the right side and the left side of his throne as he ruled this earthly kingdom they thought he was going to establish. Even they thought that he was going to be an earthly king that they were going to rule with him. They would ask him, well, when are you going to establish the kingdom? Well, when he let himself be arrested and crucified, they ran and hid, hoping that they would not be discovered and themselves be crucified as insurgents against the Roman Empire and the status quo. Try to imagine the the pain and the befuddlement and the confusion of Peter as he followed behind the mob waiting for Jesus to reveal his earthly power. He was like, any second now, any second now, you know, Jesus is going to go super saiyan and just bow bow out. Well, some of y'all know Dragon Ball Z, right? Any second now, he's just going to explode in his power. I'm going to be here to see it. Any second now. He had seen Jesus command the winds and the waves. He had seen Jesus tell the dead to rise and they got up. He had seen Jesus touch and heal more people than he could count. He had seen Jesus holding court with Elijah and Moses on the mountain of transfiguration. He and the other disciples saw Jesus walk on water. He even walked on water with Jesus for a second. He had seen Jesus gain the upper hand and hand over and embarrass the Pharisees and the Sadducees many, many times. He listened to Jesus tell that the kingdom was at of heaven was at hand so many times times, how many times had they laughed together? How many times had they walked and ate and all slept around together in the same room as they traveled? How many times? Now here was Jesus letting himself be beaten and berated and spat upon, letting himself be tried as a common criminal. In that moment, Peter's world was turned upside down. He couldn't understand. He didn't really know who this Jesus was that was getting beaten. He didn't know what to do when he got recognized and outed as a disciple of Christ. When confronted three different times, he screamed that he didn't know Jesus because in all actuality, He didn't. 
or at least not the Jesus that he saw getting beaten up and mocked and tried. Even the disciples' desire for Jesus to show his power completely blocked out the times that he told them he was going to get arrested and tried and crucified and killed and that he was going to rise again on the third day. They forgot all of that. Oh, yes, because we here in the year 2024 know who Jesus is. It's easy for us to look down our noses at Brother Peter and the rest of the disciples. But how many of us have denied Christ in our everyday lives, in our everyday actions, and in our thoughts? How many of us deny him because he does not do what we expect him to do or meet the desires to give us what we want and we know who he really is? The crowd yelled Hosanna not because they knew that Jesus was king of kings and lord of lords, but because they thought he was going to give them what they wanted. But beloved, there are many today that are worshiping the Lord not because they want to be closer to him, but because they are waiting for the big payoff. One day, God, you're going to give me the desires of my heart. One day, God, you're going to give me what I'm praying for. And they look at God like some kind of genie that's waiting to give them whatever they want. I used to wonder how could they do that? How could they do that to someone who showed nothing but love to them? I was once told as a young Christian that we crucify our Lord and Savior all over again when we sin and get wrapped up into self. If that's the case, then we who know exactly who Jesus is, we cry Hosanna every time we worship him on Sunday and then we scream crucify him every time we step outside of his will for our lives. I'm going to say that again. If that is true, then we who know and love Jesus scream Hosanna every time we worship him on a Sunday and we scream crucify him every time we step outside of his will for our lives. We have all been the collective Judas. We've all betrayed and denied the Savior, not for 30 pieces of silver, but we've all once in our, lo- in our time betrayed him for pleasure or comfort or ego or fear. In one way or another, we must all take our place among those in the crowd that scream, crucify him. And nail Jesus on the cross that day because it was for all of our sins, all of our sins that Jesus gave his life. Jesus took what we deserved and gave us what he deserved. I said, Jesus took what we deserved and gave us what he deserved. Oh, let's give the Lord praise on today. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, somebody make some noise in here today. We deserved justice, but he gave us mercy. I said, we deserved justice, but our Savior gave us mercy. Oh, let's give the Lord praise on today. (laughs) And so beloved, he was falsely accused, beaten and tortured, crucified and buried in a tomb of a man that loved and followed him named Joseph of Arimathea. Now, it has been said that tombs have often been known to tell us a lot about a person. Tombstones themselves are often said to be a very quick and brief summation 
of someone's life. The pyramids of Egypt are famous because they contain the mummified bodies of ancient Egyptian kings and all of the wealth that they were buried with. It was their folly to think that they could take material wealth that they enjoyed on earth into eternity. The Marquis Yi of Zing in the Chinese empire who was buried around 433 BC was buried with over 124 musical instruments and a set of 64 bells along with everything they thought that he would need in the afterlife. This is what's so tragic. But in another chamber of his tomb, they found the remains of a number of female attendants who were probably members of his orchestra. In another chamber of his tomb, they found the remains of other servants and guardsmen. All of these poor people were sacrificed when the Marquis Yi of Zing died so that they could serve him in the afterlife according to the belief system of that time. Talk about a bad severance package. As if having to be a servant to this person in life wasn't enough, they wanted these doomed individuals to serve this king even in death. Westminster Abbey. And London is revered because in it rests the bodies of English kings and nobility. In Medina, Saudi Arabia, Mohammed's tomb is noted for the stone coffin and the bones that it contains. Beloved, some of these ancient tombs stood only as testaments to the arrogance and the egos of those that were buried in them pathetic, futile attempts at mortality by those that feared death and feared being forgotten. And guess what? All of those men are still right there in their tombs. You see, serving those king, other kings and historical figures didn't bring anything but death to those that served and followed those kings and figures. But serving our Lord and Savior brings life and life eternal. You see, the tomb of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is famous because it is empty. Early on a Sunday morning, he got up. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, they put him in a borrowed tomb because they knew he wasn't gonna be using it for very long. He only needed it for a second. He only needed it for three days. He knew he was gonna be giving that tomb back. He was like, I'm just gonna to need to borrow your tomb for a second. Oh, somebody give the Lord praise on today. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. <laughs> Oh, give him praise on today. Some of you have been raised from dead lifestyles. You've been raised from dead futures, dead careers, dead circumstances, dead situations. You have been raised from dead marriages, dead backgrounds, dead family dynamics, dead past. Not only do you need to give him the praise, you need to tell the world what God has done for you. Don't act like you made it through all of that by yourself. You better tell somebody. Give the Lord praise on today. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. And so they denied him. They screamed for his blood. They screamed, crucify him. They may have been waiting for some kind of king that would set up a physical throne, but he was so much more. But they were right about one thing. He is a king. He is the king of kings. He is my king. 
Oh, I'm going to tell you like an old preacher told me, he is the king of the Jews. He's the king of Israel. He is the king of righteousness. He is the king of ages. He is the king of heaven. He is the king of glory. He is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Somebody say Jesus. He is a sovereign king. No means of measure can define his limitless love. He is enduringly strong. He is entirely secure. He is eternally steadfast. He is immortally graceful. He is imperially powerful. He is impartially merciful. Somebody say Jesus. He supplies strength to the weak. He is available for the tempted and the tried. He sympathizes and he saves. He strengthens and he sustains. He guards and he guides. He heals the sick and he cleanses the lepers. He forgives the sinners. He discharges the debtors. He delivers the captive. He defends the feeble. He blesses the young. He serves the unfortunate. Somebody say Jesus. He regards the age. He, rever- he returns it and rewards the diligent. He beautifies the meek. Oh, I wonder if you know him. Somebody say Jesus. He is the key to knowledge. He is the wellspring of wisdom. He is the doorway of deliverance. He is the pathway of peace. He is the roadway of righteousness. Somebody say Jesus. He is the highway of holiness. Oh, he's the gateway of glory. Somebody say Jesus. Oh, his life is matchless. His goodness is limitless. His mercy is everlasting. His love never changes. His word is enough. His grace is sufficient. His reign is righteous. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. Somebody say Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, I wish I could describe him to you, but he's indescribable. He's incomprehensible. He's an invincible. He is irresistible. You can't get him out of your mind, and you can't get him off of your hand. You can't live with him, and you can't live without him. The Pharisees couldn't stand him, but if they found out that they couldn't stop him, Pilate couldn't find any fault in him, and Herod couldn't kill him. Death couldn't handle him, and the grave couldn't hold him. Somebody say Jesus. Hallelujah. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess. Oh, somebody give the Lord praise on today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody stand and everybody stand. Hallelujah. Gee, we worship and adore thee. Bowing down before before thee. Songs of praise singing. Hallelujah. Worship him today, beloved. Oh, hallelujah. Worship him, beloved. Hallelujah. Brethren, play softly. All heads bowed, all eyes closed. This is a very sacred, private moment.
moment. We all have to face the fact that at some point in our lives that we have lived between and in the midst, we have lived between the shame of our past and the fear of our future. We've lived between the shame of our past and the fear of our future. But we don't have to be afraid of the future, do we? We serve a Savior that has risen from the dead. And if he can do it once, he can do it again. I said if he did it once, he can do it again. Dead marriages can live again. Dead dreams and dead aspirations can live again. Like the crowd that day, we diminish who Jesus really is when we limit him with our expectations. We betray him with what we want and what we want him to do for us without seeking his will for our lives. But beloved, what God has for you in your future is so much more than anything you have planned for yourself. It is far above what you have in mind for yourself. God has purpose in mind for you. He has meaning in mind for you. And even though Jesus didn't come as king of the children of that the king as king that the children of Israel thought he was going to be coming to defeat the Romans, he did come to defeat our true enemies. He came to defeat the enemy of sin of depression and despair, of hopelessness and fear. He came to give us victory over the world. He said in his word that we would have tribulation in the world, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Ultimately, beloved, he came to give us victory over death so that we could have life and life everlasting. I'm here to let you know that God's hand is on you. That he has a plan for each and every one of us. All we have to do is put ourselves in line with that plan. There may be someone here, someone online that realizes and will admit that now, now, now is the time to bring your life in line with the plan that our Heavenly Father has for you. He loves you. He got you. You can have victory over everything in your life that is holding you in bondage, that has been holding you down. All you have to do is give your life to him, and this journey that you've been on will begin to make sense. All of the pain that you've been through in your life, all of the trials and the, and the despair in your life will begin to make sense if you open your heart to him today. And if you know that God has more for you, or even if you're wondering if God has more for you, if God has further for you to go, come on down here to the altar with me. We want to pray for you. If you know that God has further for you to go, if you know that your journey is not stopping here, if you are wondering if this is all that there is, come forward, beloved. We want to stand with you. We want to pray with you. We want to walk into your purpose with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whoa, hallelujah. Come on, beloved, if you see someone struggling with this decision, stand with them. 
Come on down with them. Hallelujah. Father God, that you are faithful. Father God, we want to thank you that even though we may have had it completely wrong, that you are still faithful. That even though we thought that you were going to do things in this way, Father God, and we thought that you were this, Father God, that you are actually something else entirely, something more beautiful, something bigger than we ever could have imagined. Father God, we want to thank you that you came to give us life and life abundantly. So, Father God, we pray that you would surround your children here at the altar today, Father God. Surround everyone who is within the sound of my voice. Surround everyone who is in this church on today. Surround my brothers and sisters online and let them know that you have purpose in mind for them. For I know the thoughts towards you that I have, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. That you would have a future and a hope. So Father God, we pray, Father God, to that person who thinks they have no future, that you think of a future for them. That you have thoughts of hope for someone here that might be hopeless. That thinks, Father God, that there is nothing good that can come out of them. Father God, let them know that there is nothing that they could have ever done that will separate them from your goodness, from your love. So, Father God, we pray that you would cover them with your will. That you would cover them with your purpose. That you would cover them with your power and your presence. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And there may be someone here that realizes that now is the time that you wish to give your life to the Lord. That you want to rise to another level in your existence. So please repeat after me, dear precious Heavenly Father. We thank you for sending your son to die for our sins. We thank you for sending your son to die for our sins. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And I believe that he came down to earth to die for my sins. And I believe that he rose again on the third day. And I now ask that he forgive me for the wrong that I have done. I ask that he forgive me for the wrong that I have been. I ask that he come into my heart this very second. And into my life. In the name of Jesus. And I will live in victory from this moment on. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Oh, let's give the Lord praise on today. Somebody just got saved. Hallelujah. Well, don't leave just yet. Amen. If you just got saved or if there was someone here who would love to join West Angeles, we would be honored. Honored to go into this journey and to go and to continue this journey with you. So if you would love to join West Angeles, we will be a better church with you with us. Come on down. We want to praise the Lord for you. 
If you're already here, you see Elder John Patton right here with his hand raised. We just want you to spend a little bit of time with him. In fact, even if you don't come down here to the altar, you can meet Elder Patton on the north side of the lobby and of the concourse. We just want to get a little bit of information from you. We want to text you. We want to write you. We want to let you know that you are not on this journey alone. We will be a better church with you as a part of the West Angeles family. Let's give the Lord praise to them and say go. Somebody was blessed by that word on today. Amen. Even though we sometimes scream Hosanna in one day, and we've all screamed crucify him on another day, our Savior is faithful. And where we have deserved justice, he has given us mercy. So let's learn how to give that mercy to each other, amen? Let's learn how to love each other as he has loved us. Dear precious Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this time that we spent today. We want to thank you, Father God, that you have been faithful. We want to thank you, Father God, that you have put purpose inside of each and every one of us, that you have put greatness inside of us, Father God. So as we go down from this place, continue to remind us all this week that you are with us. Cover us in that purpose. Cover us in your power. Cover us in your protection. Bind us together as one. Teach us to love each other all the more. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you. I love you. Go forth in his power.